Hello friends and welcome back to my computer screen. It's Tuesday which means it's time for another Photoshop scrapbooking tutorial. If this is your first time here, hello and welcome. My name is Crystal and I am super excited that you are all here today. Today we are diving into the last of our four tutorial videos on layer templates, at least the last one for now. If layer templates are something that is new or unfamiliar for you, I do recommend going back and watching the first three videos in this series. The first one, I just introduced layers and clipping masks and how to use them for both Photoshop and Photoshop elements. In the second video, we talked about using pre-designed layer templates that you can purchase from designers uh, in the scrapbooking community. And in the third video last week, we talked about how we can create layer templates using basic shapes in both programs as well. So today we are talking about uh, layer templates, creating layer templates, but we are taking it one step further and using custom shapes. The good news is that this is not as hard as you might think. So let's go ahead and dive in. For today, we are going to start this tutorial in the Photoshop Creative Cloud program. And we're just going to get started by opening up a blank canvas inside of the program. For this one, I'm just going to pick a random size. It doesn't really matter with a white background. Once I have that open, I'm going to hit the control and quotation marks on my keyboard in order to bring up this grid on top of my document. Then I'm going to select the pen tool from the left sidebar. This tool is what is going to allow me to draw my shape. So I'm going to fill my shape with blue and I'm not going to put a stroke on it. I just want it to be a regular old shape. Then what I'm going to do is um, on my page, I'm going to click in the corners of some of these squares, trying my best to keep these spaced evenly and go all the way around until I connect the last and the first and the last points. This is going to create the shape that I can then move all over the page wherever I want it to go. And I can use that shape to uh, clip images to it. So I'm just gonna play around and show you guys a bunch of different shapes that you know I can make. Uh, there's a, a lot of different options that you have here. So this is obviously straight lines. I will show you a way that you can curve some of your lines using anchor points, but they're kind of hard to use. So like I am not that great at them. I need some, I definitely need some practice in making curved lines. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of different shapes here with straight lines. We have a tag shape. We've got like a wonky, hexagon. Uh, this one's going to be a more perfect hexagon here. Um, I'm also going to show you how to do something that's shaped kind of like a label. And then, um, and then we'll do one with the curved line. So you can see how, you know, not great I am at it, but practice makes perfect. And you know, that's, there's something to say for that. So if you guys are having trouble making your shape perfect or the way that you want it to look, just keep at it, keep practicing, stay patient. I know Photoshop can be really frustrating sometimes, but you know, you can do some really cool things with it. So here is that one that I thought would maybe be kind of like a, kind of like a label, um, a label shape where, you know, you could put a bunch of those all in a line on a page. That would be kind of cool. Uh, to make something really different to clip images into or, you know, patterns into, whatever, whatever you want. Um, and then the next one I'm going to do, I will show you guys how I do the um, curved line. So I'm going to start by, I'm going to start by creating a shape that's got straight lines all around it. And uh, once I have the points all made, I forget what kind of shape I'm going to make here. Um, I think something close to a tag. But once I have all the points made on this shape, then I'm going to use anchor points. So if you click, like once you make a line, if you click in the middle of that line, it's going to make another point that you can then move or adjust. If you, again, you, you're going to have to play around with it, but if you click, so here I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to add an anchor point right into the middle of one of those lines. 
there we go add anchor point so I'm gonna click in the middle and then I can click on the anchor point and pull it out in order to create a curved line so it does take a little bit of finesse to get this the way you want it for creating something that's got uh, more definition you definitely want more points like your lines will be smaller um, than what I did but in general, this gives you an idea of how you can create curved lines as well, which is super cool. So there is a lot of versatility in the different types of shapes that you can create in Photoshop Creative Cloud using this pen tool. So now let's talk about clipping images into these. So let me open up a photo here and we are going to copy that photo and paste it onto this page. I'm gonna put this one over top of the tag shape. Then I'll just go to the image, right click and select create clipping mask. I just undid that grid again by pressing the control or command and the quotation marks. So that worked out really, really nicely. So um, if you go into your shapes um, on that left sidebar, there are some other super cool things that you can do. So one, you can select the polygon tool, and then if you open up the menu, you can add in your specific height and uh, width, but you can also add in the number of sides and you can make it a star if you like. So what I did is I created mine and I said that I wanted it to have six sides. And so when I hit enter, that created for me a perfect, a perfect um, hexagon. So now I've got this hexagon here on my page that I can use for creating clipping masks. I can do the same thing, um, which I'll show you here in a second and, and make it into a star as well. So here we go. So this is that same, that polygon, but I am going to toggle the star on. And then when I hit okay, it is going to make it into a star form instead. And, um, the number of sides is going to be the number of points. So you can like make them bigger, make them smaller, do all sorts of things. There's also uh, in your shape, in your shape options, there are also uh, circles and eclipses um, and things like that. There's a custom shape tool too that, that you can use to make like wonky type shapes. So the cool thing is, is there are these presets. So you don't have to necessarily draw it if you don't want to, you know, if you don't want it to be as customized and you just want a shape, a shape like that, you can use the presets. So you can make your stars have more points. You can make your, um, hexagons into octagons or, you know, whatever you want to do. So it's just, it gives us a lot of options um, to go in here and play with the different shapes that are already in this program. So now what I'm going to do is layer up a bunch of these um, hexagons that we made earlier. So this, this is made from the polygon shape. I made it six sides, which gave me a hexagon. And I did predetermine how wide and how tall I wanted it to be. Um, so what I'm going to do is copy and paste a bunch of them and place them all around the page. Now, if you guys have been following me for any length of time, you probably have seen the page that I made using hexagons. So when I was creating that page, I took the hexagons that came in the package or in the kit that I was using, and I used those measurements to create my own hexagon shape within this program using that pen tool. So it was really, it was an easy way to create the same shape and be able to enter in my journaling or my photos to make printing everything so much easier later. But this, this is a way that if you don't have hexagons or something like that, where you can create a page like this, totally digital, you can clip in your photos and you can clip in your papers and your journaling and all that stuff and have it all ready to go. And then you can print it out on photo paper if you wish, or you can totally take those pieces and print them out on different textures in order to create a really textured hy hybrid sprout sprout spread <laughs> hybrid spread 
So you could take some of them and print them on photo paper and take some and print them on cardstock or, you know, whatever suited your fancy. It just would be a really fun way to create a page using a lot of custom shapes like this. So what I'm gonna do is pull open a couple of my pictures and clip them into these spots just so you can see what that looks like. I did leave some white area in between the shapes just because I like the way that that looks. Um, my hexagons I don't think are like perfectly perfect. <laughs> so I probably needed to figure out a better measurement of what the height and width needed to be because the uh, spaces in between them are not quite perfect. but. For the sake of this tutorial, it, it didn't really matter that much to me. So uh, if you want yours to be more precise, I would recommend figuring out um, uh, figuring out exactly how wired, how long each of those um, sides needs to be because I feel like it might be, it's just not quite, not quite right here. So, but it's okay, it does the job. So there is this page that I made within Photoshop Creative Cloud. So now let's move on to Photoshop Elements and show you guys how to create or how to use custom shapes in Elements as well. So if you are a Photoshop Elements user, I have good news for you, but I also have some bad news for you. So the bad news is that Photoshop Elements does not have a pen tool. So you cannot actually draw using the pen tool your own shapes, at least not in the same way as you can in Photoshop Creative Cloud. Um, you can do a sort of workaround and use the line tool or the line shape in order to draw out a shape on here, but uh, it's definitely not going to be as easy um, and maybe kind of frustrating. So I don't know, just a heads up there. However, inside of Photoshop Elements, you do have some of the same custom shapes presets in here. So again, you've got the polygon here, which allows you to enter in the number of sides, and it allows you to make the shapes like these hexagons for your pages. Super cool, right? So if you wanted to create a page like we did in Photoshop Creative Cloud, you totally could do that on here too. So you could just copy and paste those hexagons and layer them up on this page in order to create something just like we did before. Now there are some other really fun awesome shapes that you can use in this program as well. If you go back to the shape tool, then you'll be able to see down in the menu area that there are other shapes available. So there is a star, which again you can decide how many sides or how many points you want that star to have. There is also this blob looking shape that is a custom shape. When you click on that, you can click on the little window that shows like a black shape, right? mine showing a heart, and it's going to bring up this menu that lets you pick some other custom shapes that they already have preset into this program. So that's something that is a little bit different than Photoshop Creative Cloud. Creative Cloud does not necessarily start out with as many custom shapes as Elements does. So um, you might find that Elements has a shape like the one that you would like to draw, but maybe can't draw because there's not a pen tool. So I am going to delete off a bunch of these layers and I'm going to clip a photo into the speech bubble just for funsies. Um, and then once I do that, this tutorial is pretty much over. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this series and have um, learned maybe something new about layer templates or how to use them or how to create them or custom shapes or something. There, there is a lot, to, a lot to learn in Photoshop and I know that I am still learning all the time. Thank you guys so much for coming on this journey this month. I look forward to putting together the next tutorial series. I'm not quite sure what that's going to be yet, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Until next time, I hope you guys have a fabulous day and I will catch you in the next video. Bye now.